Hi, I'm Dr. Lim, consultant pediatrician at Thomson Hospital, Kota Damansara in Malaysia. The use of ivermectin for COVID has been a contentious issue with some people swearing by it, some others taking a cautious approach and waiting for more evidence, while other groups totally discounting its beneficial effects. So, does ivermectin work? Today, we'll be discussing the very latest ivermectin trial results on its effects on COVID infection. We'll be looking into three large randomized control trials or RCTs and three meta-analysis. Okay, let's look into the three randomized control trials first. Randomized control trials or RCT is the gold standard for any medical research on a drug or intervention. What is done in an RCT is those subjects who meet the inclusion criteria will be randomly assigned into either a treatment group or no treatment group. These no treatment group are often given a pill without medication known as a placebo. These subjects will then be followed up until a predetermined outcome is achieved. Usually it is either the patient has fully recovered, deteriorated and required ICU care or the patient died. These two groups would then be compared to determine whether the drug used made any difference. Okay, the first RCT is a study by Lopez Medina from Colombia, published in the Journal of American Medical Association or JAMA in April 2021. 200 patients on the treatment arm received a 5-day course of ivermectin compared to another 200 patients who received a placebo. The result was the median time to resolution of symptoms was 10 days for the ivermectin group and 12 days for the control group. The difference was not statistically significant. The study concluded that ivermectin did not significantly improve the time to resolution in a COVID patient. The second RCT is a study by Vallejos from Argentina published in the BMC Infectious Diseases Journal in July 2021. 250 patients on a treatment arm received ivermectin for two days compared to another 251 patients who received a placebo. The results show that 5.6% of those in the treatment group required hospitalization compared to 8.4% in the placebo group, a 33% reduction. However, this difference did not reach statistical significance. The conclusion of the study was that ivermectin has no significant effect in preventing hospitalization in patients with COVID. Okay, now we go on to the third RCT. It's a study under to the TOGETHER trials conducted in Brazil. The results of this huge study has yet to be published or peer-reviewed, but we already have some preliminary results. 677 patients received ivermectin for 3 days, while 678 patients were given placebo. The results showed 12.7% of patients on ivermectin required admission to hospital as compared to 14% of patients on a placebo. This difference was also statistically not significant. The conclusion of the study was that ivermectin did not significantly prevent hospitalization of those with COVID. Okay, now we look into three recent meta-analysis on ivermectin. Okay, meta-analysis are essentially the pooling together of several randomized control trials, usually at least 10, and using this pool data to come to some conclusion. Of course, the meta-analysis are only as good as the quality of the RCTs that they include. Okay, the first meta-analysis was by Roman, published in the Clinical Infectious Disease Journal in June 2021. 10 RCTs were included in the meta-analysis, the study concluded that ivermectin did not reduce all-cause mortality, length of stay, or viral clearance in COVID patients with mostly mild illness. Okay, the second meta-analysis was conducted by the Cochrane Reviews in July 2021, an international non-profit organization dedicated to using high-quality information to make health decisions. They looked into 14 RCTs and found that there was very low certainty evidence with regard to ivermectin's effects on mortality, worsening of COVID, adverse events or viral clearance, and low certainty evidence with regard to time to resolution of symptoms. Their conclusion was that reliable evidence available does not support 
the use of ivermectin for treatment or prevention of COVID outside of well-designed clinical trials. Finally, the third meta-analysis was by Bryant, published in the American Journal of Therapeutics in June 2021. 24 RCTs were included in the study. The meta-analysis found moderate certainty evidence that large reductions in death are possible using ivermectin. Ivermectin started early in the course of illness also reduced numbers progressing to severe disease. They concluded that ivermectin's low cost and safety is likely to have a significant impact on the COVID pandemic. Okay, so what we have here are three large RCTs and two meta-analyses that do not support use of ivermectin and one meta-analysis that supports the use of ivermectin. Okay, based on these findings, ivermectin cannot yet be recommended to treat COVID patients. While all three RCTs did show quicker resolution of symptoms and reduced need for hospitalization for those on ivermectin, they did not reach statistical significance. We eagerly await other ongoing trial results which will give us a clearer picture, including our very own Malaysian iTech study. I, for one, really hope that evidence would point to the beneficial effects of ivermectin in treating COVID patients. That way, we can have another weapon in our arsenal to fight COVID. Most of us doctors are not anti-ivermectin. We just want robust evidence of its effectiveness before starting ivermectin on our patients. Sadly, current evidence is not in favour of its use. In previous papers on ivermectin, such as that by al Ghazza from Egypt, the paper that has recently been withdrawn, and another by Niai from Iran, dramatic responses were seen with ivermectin with reduction in deaths by a staggering 80 to 90 percent. These two studies alone could account for the positive results in support of ivermectin in the meta-analysis by Bryant. However, the papers I highlighted today have given some indication that such a fantastic response to ivermectin is highly unlikely. Even if ivermectin was proven in subsequent studies to be effective, the benefits would likely be modest and not a dramatic response as touted by these earlier papers. There are still many of us who put our hopes on ivermectin to treat us when we come down with COVID infection. Some even use ivermectin to prevent us from catching COVID. I personally do not encourage nor strongly discourage such practices except to say that in some countries, including Malaysia, use of ivermectin outside controlled trials is still not allowed. But remember that ivermectin is not the game changer nor miracle cure it claims to be. At the very most, it can provide some modest benefit. Ivermectin cannot replace appropriate treatment in hospital when we deteriorate with COVID and cannot replace COVID vaccination in preventing infection. So please, I urge and beg of you, if you have COVID and your oxygen saturation is dropping, do not continue monitoring your condition at home, hoping for a miracle from ivermectin. Make your way to the hospital. And even if we believe ivermectin can prevent COVID, there's nothing wrong in getting vaccinated for an even greater degree of protection. I repeat, if you decide to take ivermectin, please make sure you do not delay in seeking treatment and getting vaccinated. Okay, that's it for this segment. Take care, stay safe, and continue to have a heart for kids.